Hi there, Tooth Fairy. Welcome to today's show. This is probably my favorite episode of all time because I'm joined with my friend, Stephanie Botts at Polished Posture. I don't want to assume everybody listening to this follows her, but most people do because she is just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to ergonomics. So if you don't follow her, go ahead and just hit her up on all social media, like ASAP, like literally pause this right now and then go start to follow her. But anyways, her and I connected years ago and we just really, really hit it off. So today we're chatting actually, and it's a little bit of a longer chat as it always is typically when her and I connect. So we did split it up in two episodes. So today her and I are talking about how we met. Of course, we're going to talk about muscle imbalances, postural distortions, what is corrective exercise and more. So stay tuned because we're diving in right now. Hey there, welcome to the Lift for Longevity podcast, where our goal is to build our strongest, healthiest body. We all deserve to feel our best, but since we only get one body, we have to make sure to protect it by moving safely and with purpose to prevent pain, injury, and surgery. I'm your host, Brianne Novias, and I'm a fit pro turned business owner and also a girl mom. I'm obsessed with educating and empowering dental pros on how to take care of their body by training efficiently and building the right muscles to prolong their career. I know you're tired of spending time working out but still dealing with annoying aches and pains, getting rid of your pain temporarily only to have it come right back just a few hours later, or feeling like you never have any energy. You wish there was a long-term solution to get rid of your pain for good. Well, I'm here to give you real life, actionable steps that you could take today to get rid of your pain, say goodbye to quick fixes, and have energy to live a life that you love. So if you're ready to get stronger, enjoy your life outside the operatory, and have longevity in your career, grab yourself a high protein snack and let's get to it. Hi, Brianne. How are you today? I'm good, Stephanie Boz. Anytime I get a chance to talk to you is a great day. (laughs) <laughs> well, and just, it's funny because we talk so much and sometimes our conversations, I'm like, God, I wish this was recorded because this would actually be good content, you know? So now uh, that's actually happening. But um, thanks for jumping on with me today. Of course. I'm excited. Thank you for having me. So I already gave the listeners a background as far as you're a corrective exercise specialist and you focus on hygienists. But I was thinking just in preparation for this episode, I'm like, how did we actually meet? And I think it was on um, LinkedIn, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I get this question a lot. People are like, how did you start working with hygienists? Well, those people think I'm a hygienist and then I'm like, spoiler alert, I am no. not. Like, there's no way I can pass <laughs> chemistry. So like, God bless you all. <laughs> um, and then I talk about you and yeah, how I met you. Well, I think it was just like, it was in response to maybe a post of mine and you're like, oh my God, like we're kind of talking about the same thing, you know? And it's just, um, it's funny how you meet people in life that like you just click right away, you know, and just vibe mm-hmm. from the beginning. And I definitely feel like that with you. And of course, professionally, I mean, we've got some interests in mind in um, trying to help hygienists just be healthier. And it's like, I'm on the ergonomic side, which sometimes people think that's all you need. And sure. it, I mean, it's not, you know, it's a well-rounded thing. If you're not sleeping, if you're not strengthening, if you're not hydrating or eating well, like you're still going to feel like crap. So, um, but you're kind of on the other side as far as strengthening. I know you talk some about like nutrition and stuff too. So it just makes sense, you know, that we, um, that we're friends and we talk a lot. Yeah. And we're both cancers. <laughs> and that helps too. But what, <laughs> so you've been a personal trainer for um, uh, like 12 years. Honestly, I should really know this, but like, I don't even know. My daughter was five. Once things go She's over 10 18. years, it's like, I don't know. Um, well, sorry. I, know some people, you I ask them how old they are and they don't even know. And I'm always like, how is that possible? <laughs> Um, so I started, yeah, I was start, starting personal training with my daughter. Well, my first job ever, I was 17 and I kind of left the industry and came back, but yeah, she was five and she's 18 now. So I think it's like 13 years, but it's okay. been a minute, like to say the okay. least. <laughs> but that, that was personal training. Um, so I'm sure that you worked with like a whole bunch of different clients, but then when did you get your, um, two questions, when did you get your corrective exercise specialist certification? And what exactly is that? Like, how is it different from a personal trainer? 
So, okay, I want to make sure I answer both of your questions. So basically, similar to how hygienists have to get, you know, CEs all the time, the same thing goes for personal trainers. Like, yeah, you can get your um, certificate, great. But like every couple of years, you have to have a certain amount, a certain amount of CEUs, right? And so I'm constantly taking, plus I love to learn about the body. Like, it's just what I enjoy doing, right? You always call yourself a nerd. Well, I'm a nerd when it comes to the body because it's just so fascinating to me. But um, so basically, you know, yes, I've done personal training, I've done group fitness i've done small small group i've done corporate wellness medical fitness management like you name it um but when i worked for a my corporate wellness job in 2019 my newest or my excuse me my like most um uh, up-to-date cert from that time that i really was interested in was uh corrective exercise because it's so you know the more time we spend on our phone and on our desktop right it's like you see people have these imbalances it's not just in hygienists like it's you know my daughter's teenage friends i look at them and i all have round on shoulders because they're on their phones all day and it's like i feel like every single trainer should have this knowledge but i would say it's almost like a hygienist that has a mild functional therapy um experience so it's it's under that okay. like you know personal training umbrella but it's just like a, a specific method that we use within the fitness realm does it that is your question yeah yeah well what so what exactly is a corrective exercise specialist to sum it up it's kind of like a movement expert right like you identify what imbalances not even imbalances what limitations are present in your body and then how do we correct those right so that we are working in a correct movement pattern and i can go into movement patterns if you want me to i'm sure at some point i will in this podcast but uh, you know, when you're working out in a faulty movement pattern because of your imbalances, A, you're working the wrong muscles, but B, you're also like putting additional stress, tension, whatever words you want to use it on your muscles, your joints, your tendons, right? And it's just, it's not an efficient way to work out. Um, so this kind of realigns your body, if you will, to more of like, not like a natural position, but like, you know, your natural body's movement patterns are different from mine versus, you know, whoever's listening, right? So it's just based on like your physical limitations and then where we go from there so that we start to move optimally. Okay. So it's like if someone, you know, after years of practicing dental hygiene, maybe they've got a super tight chest or they don't have really good shoulder mobility anymore. And then they go into the gym and start working out. But those issues are actually like making their workout not super efficient. They're not really working the muscles they think they're working. It's almost like um, like when someone comes in and their their bite is off or something and they've got malocclusion and they're chewing, but they're like hitting areas way too hard and then just not using their mouth and their jaw muscles the way they're supposed to be used. And then they end up with all these issues. So I feel like it's kind of the same thing, right? That's a great analogy. Yeah. Because it's like, then they're doing overhead presses. They don't have the range of motion. They don't have the mobility, right? And it hurts or they push through the pain. And it's like, it's really doing more of a disservice when we don't have the proper, it's essentially mechanics, right? If your body mechanics are not where they need to be, like, issues are going to happen whether you notice them or 10 years down the road you're like oh shit like what's going on you know what i mean it's like your body is smart it'll adapt to those things but you know you're going to pay the price in one way or another to you know yeah. if that makes sense well i'm glad you mentioned pushing through the pain because i think that that is something that's very common in dentistry um this whole you know culture of all of us in pain and like we're all hurting and it's it's become normalized in our field unfortunately but i know especially with working out i have heard over and over you know people are just like just going ham and being a hero and pushing through the pain and it's like i don't i don't know if that's really the right thing and i know you talk about that especially on your instagram page is like don't be a hero, like don't push through the pain. So I really appreciate the way that you approach training um, because it's very effective. I mean, I've taken your lift for longevity like three times now, um, but it's also like kind and it recognizes that people are human, you know, and like maybe we shouldn't be pushing ourselves so hard. But you mentioned yeah. muscle imbalances. <laughs> and when I, okay, this is kind of embarrassing, but um a couple of years ago, when I first got into like ergonomics and stuff, I guess it's been a few years ago, but I heard the word muscle imbalance and I kind of understood what it was. But you know what I always thought of was um, this one movie. Have It's called um, Lady in the Water. It's an older movie. It's from like M. Night Shyamalan. 
Like, I don't know. Never heard of it. It's kind of this obscure movie. Yeah. But there was a character in that movie and he was for, I can't even remember why, but he was lifting only with one arm. So like doing all of these like exercises with one arm and then his other arm, he wasn't doing anything. So he had one side of his body that was like huge and ripped and then the (laughs) other side that wasn't. And that's kind of what I thought was a muscle imbalance, but the muscle imbalances you're talking about are much different. So what what's it like what is a muscle imbalance and what's an example of one that's really common in hygienists? Well, okay, just to kind of piggyback off that movie that I've never heard of, but basically that's more of like an asymmetry for aesthetic purposes, okay. right? Like, well, and and at the end of the day, we all have one side that's stronger. Nobody in the world, not even Arnold Schwarzenegger, is a hundred percent symmetrical, right? We all have one arm and one leg dominant, whether you're right handed, typically it's your right hand or vice versa. Um, so that can play into factor. But I'm not really talking about aesthetics, right? Like, yeah. at the end of the day, like, looking great is nice, but that's going to be an after effect of, you know, training efficiently by building a balanced body. But basically, in muscle imbalances, it's essentially an imbalance between, it could be, like, in hygienists, for example, when you have forward head and rounded shoulders, right? There's an imbalance. Your chest is tight. Your lats are tight. Your upper traps are tight. But then what's weak is, like, the mid and the lower traps, the serratus anterior, um, the rhomboids. So it could be anterior to posterior, right? Um, but also like I have a lot of clients or I see a lot of hygienists with like a lateral pelvic tilt when their imbalances are then, um, present, like, you know, on the right to left side, right. More lateral, lateralized. So it's, it's a generic term, but it's basically one muscle short and tight and then the other one's long and weak. Right. So we need to kind of mirror those or find the best balance. So they work synergistically together. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So it's like, I mean, and especially in dentistry, we're very familiar with this, that um, the whole body works together. Everything is connected. So this makes sense. But with a muscle imbalance, basically you've got a group of muscles, like a group of muscles A and group of muscles B that are supposed to be working together. But then a Mm -hmm. muscle imbalance occurs when like some muscles here in group A are pulling way too hard. These ones aren't really working anymore. And then that can kind of like when we're talking about poor posture, that can make us have this stooped over like our shoulders are forward like you said our head is out forward and that yes that could be because of like hunching over laptops or hunching over our patients but also I mean it turns into an actual muscle imbalance where we've got muscles that are actually pulling us and like holding us in those poor positions is am I kind of on the right track you are but it's not exactly they're pulling you they're following like your body always wants to conserve energy and it takes the path of least resistance. So when you're sitting okay. like this, you know, your cervical head, or your cervical head, your head, your cervical spine is more forward than it should be neutral. Your muscles are following that. A and B, gravity is pushing you down. So that's why you see people, you know, I was talking about this before, people were like 80 years old. Well, we're like this. Well, because gravity has been pushing them down for 80 years, right? Um So that's kind of what's going on there. I was going to say something else on that. And then I forgot. Oh, the other one is, um, yes, I think, I think it's maybe obvious or clear from what we're stating that like forward head posture and rounded shoulders is from, you know, leaning forward, looking down. But the other thing I see is when you're leaning to one side, when you're practicing, I just messaged you about this the other day. That's why your hip comes high, right? Because you're constantly one hips hiked, one hips dropped. That's a lateral pelvic tilt. You don't want that. You want it to be more neutral. So that's, a whole nother can of worms, but guess what? You can have one or the other or both, but it doesn't matter because everything is connected. So if you have an imbalance in your upper body, it's going to affect the pelvis and vice versa. There's no, I have to strengthen my back. Okay, well, you have to strengthen everything. Like it doesn't work like that. You know, like if one tooth is crooked, they're all, all the ones surrounding it are crooked, right? It's not just one tooth. I don't think it's like the snowball effect. No, you're right. Um, And it's especially with the bite, it's a snowball effect. You know, it's like, yeah, you've got an issue here, but then all of a sudden you've got issues in the back and over here and it just like turns into this big mess. And I feel like that's kind of what happens with the body too. Mm -hmm. Um, So that question, what you mentioned, what we were talking about the other day, um, Brianne had reached out to me about someone who is, um, she has a lateral pelvic tilt and it's because she's leaning and she stands and she uses the foot pedal while she's standing. And so she is like overcompensating because she's trying to balance while using the foot pedal. And I had just mentioned to Bri- Brianne, for the most part, I don't recommend people doing that. Um, I do like it when they alternate sitting and standing for sure, but I usually recommend people sit on things that they are with things that they don't or that they do need the foot pedal for. And then they'll stand for things that they don't because 
I know me, one, I'm clumsy and I just cannot, I'm not coordinated enough to do that. And also I don't want to develop that overcompensation and, and, and get a lateral pelvic tilt like that. So it all uh-huh. is connected. It's like what we're doing in the operatory, but then it can lead to things that, um, that affect our body long-term. So I know that you, you have chosen to work specifically with hygienists. Um, is that because we're like so messed up or why, <laughs> like, why did you choose to work with us? <laughs> Um, I, no, I wouldn't say that. I mean, like I said, everybody's got some imbalance. Maybe hygienists have a bit more extreme just because, you know, think about it. You're working in these small postures and these, you know, repetitive motion, ugh, motions. And, you know, there's a lot of factors, you know, what they are. I'm not going to list them off, but, um, it, I don't want to say it was by accident because I don't believe in accidents, but, um, you know, I was working it with clients in the gym forever and they had imbalances too. So I had that knowledge, but it wasn't really until you and I connected and I'm like, you know, chatting with you, kind of just learning about you and what you do. Right. I'm like, I love what you're doing. Like I love female entrepreneurs and just networking. Like I had no agenda behind having on a call with you at all. I just wanted to talk to you and learn about what you do. Um, but the more and more we talked and the things you were stating, I'm like, Stephanie, like, this is great what you're doing, but like, you can't just have good ergonomics when you have broken shoulders. You can't keep your shoulders pulled back, but you can't keep, keep your hips square because then only sometimes are they lateral tilted and they're like rotated. So there's, or, you know, and that's why one leg's shorter, right? And so there's just so many things at play. And I'm like, you, you know, we really kind of need to take a step back and fix our imbalances so that our ergonomics, you know, can be optimal. And you're like, I, I know, like I see, you know, people tell you, you, it hurts. It's like uncomfortable to pull their shoulders back or they can't keep them back for very long. Um, it was just like your teeth have memory. So your muscles, but then it was just kind of talking to you and, you know, making you aware, not making you aware. I think you knew this was an issue, but you didn't have a solution. And I'm like, well, I have a solution. Like I've been doing this for years. I can help. And then I put together a program. I started getting clients and they're like, oh my gosh, I don't have to go to the car anymore. Oh my gosh, I can pick up my kid. I don't have pain. I have all this energy. And I'm like, Oh, wow. I guess, you know, like I'm onto something more than I thought. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, I have clients who are 39 years in getting completely out of pain. And it's like, it's cool because whether you're two years in or 39, I can still help you, but it all comes down to getting to the root of why do you have pain? And it's not always pain. I know you talk about that a lot. Tension. Why are your upper traps so tight all the time? There's a reason, right? And you can stretch them all day long, but it's not the solution. So I'm probably going to go on a tangent now, so I'll just stop there. But you're right. I didn't have a solution for um, what you do because I'm not a personal trainer. I like to work out, but I'm I'm certainly not qualified to advise anyone on what they should do. Um, and mm-hmm. you just really taught me about muscle imbalances and how it's like, sure, tell someone what good posture is, you know, have the ear in line with the shoulder. What happens if they have a muscle imbalance that's physically preventing them from getting into that posture or they can't hold it for very long because they've gotten so weak. So you've provided a solution. It just like complements what I'm doing because you really need both, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, you can't have one without the other. So what are some examples of really common muscle imbalances that you've seen in hygienists? Because I know you've worked with like 150 of us over the past yeah, couple of years, right? So yeah. what are like maybe a couple that um, that seem to be keep coming up? So off the top of my head, of course, forward head posture. And these are postural distortions, right? Rounded shoulders. So you've got excessive cur- curvature of the thoracic, which trickles down to the lumbar. So a lot of times, you know, you have an anterior pelvic tilt. So if you have a tight hips, uh, tight hips, if you have tight hips, weak core, your glutes are tight, right? Th- there's, there's so many. I honestly, those are a few like kind of across the board that I see, but I have a lot of clients, they have one shoulder slumped, right? Or they have scoliosis. Um, wing scapula is another one because your shoulder works in conjunction with your scapula. And I would say 99.9% of hygienists, they actually don't have the proper mechanics with their shoulder and their scapula. So that's another one. So I don't want to just ramble a million off because again, it's, it's a lot more complex than people yeah. think. Um, yeah. I see people all the time like, well, I don't have balance when I lunge. Of course you don't. Like a lunge is a very advanced movement and people don't realize it. it's not a beginner movement. I would say 50% of my clients, they don't even lunge within the first few weeks because we have to fix their knees cave in or they don't have ankle mobility or their hips not aligned. Like there's so many things at play. So if you're feeling like, I'm not sure if I'm doing things right, or if you're squatting and your chest is falling forward, okay, well, you're not actually squatting properly. You might be squatting for your body's 
proper mechanics at this point in time, but like that's putting tension on your low back. Um, a lot of times from that forward head, then I see people's whole like center of gravity is just shifted forward. So every time they lunge or squat or do a step up, their knees shooting forward and it's putting all this tension on their knee joint and their like, knee hurts. Well, we want the tension on our muscles, right? Our quads, our glutes. Yes, we yes, don't yes. want tension. Our joints are meant to bend, not actually bear weight. Or if you're locking things out and you're like, my elbow hurts. Well, we're trying to work the muscles, not the joints. And so there's just so many things I see, but it's almost because Yes, there's imbalancing, but it's your body's way of compensating for those imbalances is really what's going on. So, okay, everything you just said, I'm like, oh, my God, like, that's a lot, you know, to think about. So how is it that you like, how do you make this simple for people, I guess? Um, because like, how how does someone know that they have a muscle imbalance? Um, and And how do you like help them get over that? That's really a loaded question, and I, I okay. love to simplify things, <laughs> but I might talk for 10 minutes trying to simplify. So and to be honest, I'm actually putting together a quiz of 10 questions on, like, how do you know if you have imbalances? But, you know, if you have okay. excessive tension and you're not going to have migraine headaches, you know, any any sort of pain, like, pain is common, but it's not normal, right? It might yeah. be your body is normal, but you shouldn't have pain during a workout, after a workout. I have clients all the time working four days in the app and they don't have any pain. They're not going to the chiro. So like if you're having pain, that's definitely an indicator. Tension. Um, so the way that I alleviate these limitations or correct them, if you will, basically I do an assessment, right? It's kind of like how you would do an, um, or a comprehensive exam on a new patient, right? I need to see mm -hmm. your posture from the front and the side. I need to see, you know, your external orientation of your shoulders, your hips, check your squat and just see, you know, how your body mechanically is working. What's, you know, dysfunctional, um, so that we know what corrective exercises to implement. And, you know, and I, and I hate to say that because people ask me all the time, what exercises should I do? What exercises should I do? And it's like, I can't just give you exercise. I can't. Yeah. But that doesn't mean they're going to help. Anybody can just get exercises, right? But we have to make sure we're getting the right exercises. Because if you're, for example, my client, Danielle, she had a hip pain. She had a hip pain. Four weeks in, her hip pain was completely gone. She was going to the chiro every week. She's now six months in working with me because she moved on to phase two. She has no pain. And she hasn't gone to the chiro since. So clearly those are the right exercises, right? But it's, you know, you have to really assess and then most of the times that could be the correct exercise. If it's not fixing it, A, it could be the wrong exercise, which, you know, I'm human, that will happen. But B, like my client who I spoke about the other day, she has the right exercises, but she's not executing really. Okay. And then three, um, she's still leaning at work. That's why I sent you that message because I can help you all day fix your hip height. But if you're going back in the app and leaning for four days a week, I can't help you. Um, but this is another thing that I want to touch on, or maybe we can save this for later, but it's like, you know, I see people going through the motions, you know, I know you rush all day at work, trying to get everything done in an hour. And then that bleeds over to the rest of your life. You're rushing through exercises and you're doing yourself, you're going through motions, you're doing a disservice. You're not actually working efficiently. And so I said, I want to you record these, send them my way so I can see what you're doing. She wasn't executing them properly at all. Um, so that's another thing that's, that's really, really important is just like you would assess somebody's ergonomics. You need to see, are they chicken winging it? Are they death gripping it? Like it's the same yeah. thing with, you know, everyday life in the gym or pick up your kids or whatever, you know? So you're doing, you're, you're doing, doing like assessments and looking to see if someone has forward head, if they've got, um, like what you said, ankle mobility issues, which I'm working on my own right now, um, uh -huh. which is helping. So thank you for the tips that you've given me. Um, but what is your, you mentioned a, the chiropractor and, um, you know, chiropractor and physical therapy and massage and acupuncture and all of that is very, um, I think it's helpful. I think it has its place. It's very common in dentistry that it's almost like Whoa. normal for a dental hygienist to be seeing a chiropractor Whoa. on a weekly Whoa. basis. Um, but it just warms my heart every time I see one of your posts that someone doesn't have to do that anymore. Because if they are, this is my opinion, um, if they're seeing a chiropractor or doing physical therapy, that's great. But if they're coming into the operatory and they're twisting 50 times during an hour or like having their head forward the entire time, I'm sorry, but that stuff is not going to help you. 
And so I feel like you and I are on the same page that way, but it's the same with your program. You know, if they're doing everything that you're saying and lifting and all of that, but coming into the operatory and still doing these bad things, it's just like, well, that's why these things work together. You know, we have to mm-hmm. be strong, but we also have to make sure that we're um, not doing these repetitive motions in the operatory. What are some of the repetitive things that you know of in the operatory that cause some of these muscle imbalances? Uh, well, that's a good question, Stephanie. You realize I'm not a hygienist, right? <laughs> what would, I would you say? Speculate? Leaning. I would say yeah. leaning is a big one. Um, well, the thing is this, and I have clients like all, leaning onto one hip. Up. Mm-hmm. Type thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or I feel like my mind's all over the place. Another thing I see a lot too is when you're, um, well, this might not even be kind of along the lines of what you're talking about. But I see this a lot is when you're so rounded and you're thoracic, it's like your speckle is like kind of ballooned to the posterior rib cage. You can't breathe very well. So then your body, it tries, you, you have that, um, red flare because it's like your body's trying to get a breath, right? Wherever it can, it's seeking the path of least resistance. Um, but that leads to a weak core, right? And I have clients all the time telling me, oh, I can sit up straighter, right? Because we have to make sure that our pelvis is aligned and our ribcage are aligned so that we can sit up straight, right? Because if you're leaning all day, A, you don't have the core strength. But like you said, it goes, I always say like strengthening and um, ergo is kind of like brushing and flossing. Like you absolutely need yeah. both. Because guess what? When you strengthen the core by aligning the ribcage and the pelvis, you will be able to sit up longer, which your ergonomics is going to be better. So it kind of is like a default, but vice versa, right? You know, so if you're having poor ergonomics, it's leading to imbalances. But if you fix your imbalances, it's going to improve your um, your ergo. So it's everything's everything's related, right? And, it is. And, and I would imagine, too, you know, shoulder issues and shoulder mobility is a big problem um, with dental professionals. And I just think of, you know, them reaching constantly for the overhead light. I mean, it could be hundreds of times a day if they're using the overhead light or reaching for their stuff, this full arm extended reach, like or chicken winging or hunching, you know, all of that stuff just really affects the shoulder. Um, and then I would imagine it would lead to all kinds of like this chain of muscle imbalances, right? Mm-hmm. Or I have clients who are like doing assisted hygiene, right? And so they're just cranking them out. They don't, you know, they're not doing microbiotics, they're not drinking water, they're not, you know, they're just nose deep all day, every day. And it's like, it's so much stress on your body. And, you know, so that's, you know, I don't have the solution to that, obviously, but that's a problem too, because I had a girl tell me she was seeing like eight patients in the morning at six at night or, or you know, in the before lunch and after lunch. And I'm like, oh my God, and like, no, that's one crazy. Should be seeing that many. I mean, you know, so that's it's like, crazy. I could give you all the exercises all day long, but it's like, you know, if you're, you know, if you're in an environment like that, and I'm not trying to take this call on a, on a different term, but it's like, you know, those, those make a big difference, right? I have a girl right now who works five days a week and I'm like, wow, but she works yeah. um, for the government. And so like they all work five days, they have to. So it's just, you know, but that's the thing, you know, when people fix their mouths, my client Donna who's 39 years in, she's like, I feel like I could work as much or as long as I want to. Now she had sciatica, she has no sciatica, she has, you know, she's just a whole new woman. So Well, that's your goal, right? I mean, you really just want people to like take control of their health, make sure that they're strong, that they're resilient. And then they have the choice whether they want to work, you know, five days a week. That's not something I want to do. Um, But they, they have the choice instead of their body kind of failing them and forcing them out of the operatory. And then they have to worry about what the hell they're going to do for money, you know? So I I just really appreciate that, that approach that you have. One question I get often Um, and then I always just refer people to you every time I get the question, I really try to stay in my (laughs) lane, but they're like, I have forward head or I already have a hunchback. Like, can, is it possible for me to correct that? And I feel like that's probably a very complex question. It's not a yes or no. Um, but I would think, you know, if it's because of muscle imbalances, then yeah, they probably can fix it. If it's, if it's more like with the bones and stuff, like, I don't, I don't know what they could do for that, but what's your opinion on that? I'm sure you've gotten that question too, right? Yeah, that's not the question I thought you were going to ask, but essentially your imbalances, I think I mentioned this earlier, but they're following your bones and your joints, right? So it's not like your muscles are tight because they feel like being tight. They're tight because your, your head is forward and it's putting excessive tension on them all day long. Right. So yeah, I mean, everything is, 
you know, well, every, every person, person, every case is, you know, we're all individuals. We all have our own human experience at work, outside of work. So different things can be factors. But, you know, there are things, you know, if you have severe, severe kyphosis, we can make improvements, but you're not going to go back most likely to how you were when you were 20 years old. You know what I mean? If you're yeah. 40 years in dentistry. Uh, but my goal is... You know, people talk about all the time, anterior pelvic tilt's not bad. Well, it is when you have pain. My goal is yeah. to get you out of pain or to minimize it as much as possible. So, yes, the hunchback doesn't look wonderful, but if you're having pain um, because of the hunchback, if we can alleviate that pain, that's my goal. I don't want people to even, yes, longevity in your career is important, but if you're not feeling comfortable at work, how are you feeling outside of work? How is your quality of life? Like, yeah. that's where I'm really passionate about what I do is because if you're in pain at work, you're in pain at home. Chances are not always, but if you're not yet, you will be. And you guys bust your ass. You work too hard to, to have to work and look like that. And I'm just not about that life. And that's why I love hygienists because anybody can help you, you know, get stronger or lose weight. Not anybody, but like, you know, there's, there's a lot of fitness trainers out there for that. Yes. And there's not a lot of yeah. people who, who do what I do. And I, I want you to be pain-free build your strongest, healthiest body for your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, right? However long we're on yeah. this earth. And it's about uh, longevity. Because... I mean, it, it really is. Yeah. It's, of course, I care about um, how people feel now, but I really care about how they're going to be 20, 30, 40 years from now. And it's what mm -hmm. we that's going to impact that, you know? I hope you guys enjoy this conversation with Stephanie. She is just amazing in all things and she's super passionate so stay tuned for our next episode next week we're going to talk about strength training in particular exercises to do exercises to avoid we'll touch on posture bras and other fitness myths so tune in next week you won't want to miss that episode thank you so much for listening in today i hope you got a takeaway from this episode and if you did would you be so kind to share it with another dental pro you think would benefit from it I know you love learning and chances are that they do too. Also, I would love to connect with you on Instagram. So go ahead and head over to the Lift for Longevity podcast page or follow me at Built by Brienne. If you shoot me a message saying hello, I will personally respond because I love chatting with dental pros. Before you go though, I want to let you know that I appreciate you and what you do and I hope to chat soon. Until next time, stay strong.